Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. What I wanted to do for you guys today is kind of like, um, save you a bit of money. <laughs> is my lighting, is my lighting weird? So I'm gonna run through some products with you that I've bought, um, that I actually thought would be really, really great and have completely, completely disappointed me. Just before we get into that today, if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Robert, I'm a professional makeup artist here on YouTube and also in real life, and it is my goal here to help you become a pro yourself or just someone who's really good at makeup. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then please consider subscribing. And talking about being good at makeup, no matter how great you are, I feel like sometimes some products do just not work because they aren't so great. Let's start off with something I used recently that I really, really couldn't get on with, and that is the Revolution Pore Perfecting Primer. So I was sent this from a friend of mine, which I'm very, very grateful for, and I used it, and I was filming a video, I can't remember which one it was, and sometimes I use the Elf Poreless Party Primer because I really, really like it. It's actually quite nice visually, even if you're not wearing makeup, and now they do a mattifying one, which is great. So I thought, let me give this one a go. Let's see how similar it is. And it's not like, I mean, e.l.f. isn't an expensive brand. It's a drugstore brand. So it isn't like they're trying to mimic an expensive brand, so therefore can't reach the same quality, if that makes sense. So I used this one. Let me just tell you, and maybe it's because I have oilier skin. I was powdering my face every two minutes. Every two minutes. Same makeup routine, same skincare routine, just as primer was different. And oh my God, it my, I just, if you have an oilier skin, I would absolutely not go for that primer. It was, it just did not work for my skin in any way. And that may be because I'm oily. That, that's the only thing I can think of in such a way. In terms of texture, I feel like the e.l.f. Putty Primer kind of um, disappears on the skin, whereas the Revolution one felt like it had more of a silkier kind of canvas to the skin and almost created that slip. Um, so I was not too happy with that at all. I would recommend sticking to the e.l.f. primer. I'm not sure what the price difference is. If any, two drugstore brands maybe don't go for that one. I think that's like Revolution haven't quite got there. Going from drugstore to something that's actually quite expensive. This is the Vizier Seamless Eye Primer. Eye primers are my, I have to use an eye primer whenever I do eye makeup. I will never use concealer. <laughs> ever. And I love Viseart. Their palettes, although very, very expensive, as somebody who's a makeup artist, I like to invest in my kit, if that makes sense. I like to invest money into products and things I'm going to use on other people's faces who are paying me money. So I thought I'll try the eye primer because Viseart is an absolutely incredible, extremely, extremely professional brand. When I used it, however, I've used it maybe two or three times and I did find the base very, very sticky. So there's a difference between the base being tacky and sticky. I find it tacky it has that kind of um, texture you can build up product on, but you can still blend. I found with the Viseart base, wherever I was moving the eyeshadow, it almost stuck and imprinted, if that makes sense. So instead of blending out, like you put a dab here and then that color, that patch of color stood there. It stayed there, it was sticking, like glued on. So it gave the impression of a really patchy eyeshadow. And I just feel like that is not really what you want. The idea of a base is to get this really smooth blend, really um, seamless kind of blend, whereas that kind of did the opposite. Love their products, I think they're absolutely incredible. That one I'm gonna give a miss. Um, from now on, I don't think I'll be, be buying that one again. But I love you, Viziat. <laughs> so talking about eyes and eyeshadows and disappointment, let's talk about the more free, more free. Let's talk about the more free 351 Ice Fantasy. I bought this because I really wanted to support Pony. I think she's absolutely incredible, an incredible artist. I have some of her own brand products. And to be honest with you, I don't know why I bought this because I bought um, like the Christmas Morphe release and I just despised it. I thought the texture was awful. So this palette, Visually, it's really, really nice. Looks really great, looks um, really attractive. Here's why I don't like this. One, because the texture's awful, like with most Morphe eyeshadow palettes recently. Since that kind of texture change, I just really, really don't like it. Even like these shimmers are quite kind of dry, but you don't get that really nice kind of sheen from it. Why do I look so pale? But here's my thought with this. Okay, so say you don't have much money. Say you don't have money to be blowing on makeup, an unnecessary thing like makeup, although I think it's necessary. Let's say this is the only palette you can afford to buy this year or within this six months or something like that, and you've invested your money in this. I don't think it's very good at structuring a whole eye look. You do have these darker tones here, 
but they all have this kind of gray underlying tone to them. Mixing like a gray tone with all these pastels is incredibly, incredibly difficult to achieve a nice look. But like Pot Yang is quite bright and quite flat against like a gray tone like this is not a good look. So when it comes to structuring a whole look from this, if this is the only palette you're buying, I really don't think it's great at all. Even the darker tones here are shimmers. So you can't get that deep, deep, dark kind of depth. This is like one of the only matte dark shades, which is like this purpley tone, but it still has a gray undertone. What are you gonna do with these guys? These friends, these little babies here. How are you gonna construct a whole look with this palette? Tell, tell me. The looks that have been done with this are absolutely beautiful, but they're only using these pastel shades um, because you can't construct a whole look. Purples you probably can, because you you know, these are kind of in the same color family. But do you get what I'm trying to say? And then you have this random silver glitter here. For, for why are you here, young young man? I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get that palette at all. And I've, I've tried to give Morphe a chance so many times and I just can't. We're gonna come to another product of theirs, but first of all, sticking to eyeshadow, let's talk about these from um, Revolution Pro. I don't wanna seem like I'm picking on Revolution today. Here's my thing with Revolution. They have some great, 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 great products, like their color books amazing amazing they have some not so great it's very inconsistent and i don't know why i really can't figure out why these look so creamy and i saw these online and actually my friend sent me a picture of hers and she's done some incredible looks with them but they just look so dry i couldn't wait to use this blue and i'm not a blue person because it looks so creamy let me tell you it's not even creamy to a touch can you see it crumbling dry 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 fallout is insane like absolutely insane and i bought three of these not the same color different colors but and this is revolution pro so it's a little bit pricier compared to their other eyeshadow um products and actually not as good i really really dislike these palettes quite a lot if these were creamier i've tried using them wet as well N not good not good if they were creamier um they would be beautiful what a stunning looking palette just not just not i just dropped it so next up, Morphe. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about, let's not talk about Morphe, but let's talk about Morphe. What's happened? What happened? What happened to you, Morphe? I, I used to trust them so much. I loved everything they did um, until things started to change. It was just, I don't, I don't know what's happened there, but I'm, I am never going to buy eyeshadows from Morphe again. Setting spray, I really like. I just ordered some of the peach one. Um, brushes, I do like. I know people are like, oh, Morphe brushes. But if you want to start off, I ordered a whole bunch of Morphe brushes for YouTube and Instagram because YouTube and Instagram isn't my professional work. My professional work, I have um, pricier brushes and brushes that I know are going to do a good job for me. So I bought some Morphe ones because I was like, they'll do for... Instagram and YouTube because I keep my Instagram and YouTube kit completely separate from my professional kit They're not the same not the same products. I don't mix the two. So I do like them Um, and then what else there's their blender like their beauty sponge is quite nice. Also, let's just talk about these lashes I thought from Morphe a brand who are known for eyes, right? I eyeshadows although they were called Morphe brushes, but for eyeshadows, they're known for their palettes, they release more palettes than anything else. So they bring out these lashes. So I ordered two pairs. Let me just, obviously I'm not gonna pop them on properly. These are these big ones, these are called, go on and fake it. No, they're not, they're called So Glamorous. So these big, big lashes are called So Glamorous. Let me just tell you, what the fuck is that? These, these, they're just tacky. If I'm honest, they look awful. To see this, um, individual kind of um length when it's such a long lash when it's smaller nice you know it's kind of dull like whatever but when it's that really long length it just looks costumey it looks um themed then these ones these are called posh and they're almost a complete opposite despite looking really feathery i'm just balancing them on my lash nothing absolutely nothing terrible 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 shapes Let's combine the two together and see if that's even better because I feel like the posh one would fill in the gaps for um, <laughs> the other one. No, not even. Just just a load of crap. And here's the thing. You can do really big, big lashes and make them look good. Recently, I got these lashes from Jashan Lashes. Um, and look, look how long these are, right? 
let me just show you. These, by the way, these are, I like these. These aren't on my not like list. They are so, so long. Almost like threatening looking because they're so long. And I feel like if you have a big, big lash, but you need some kind of definition, you need some kind of um, shape to it. Let's look at this. Look, it's feathery. There's different lengths of lashes. They spread out in different ways. I mean, they are huge, but look, you have different lengths, different texture. There's depth, there's, there's you know, shape. I don't understand how a brand like Morphe that clearly make so much money, how are you so terrible? at making eyelashes. Let's stick with lashes and let's take a look at Glossier Lash Slick. Whoop. So really, I really, really like this brand for skin, um, as in foundation, concealer, um, brows, absolutely, I want to spit, brows, absolutely incredible. Eye products, as in eye makeup, not so much. I think they have a little bit more tweaking to do. I just feel like there is no reason for mascaras to have fibres in anymore. This is a fibre mascara. The reason I don't like fibres is because, and especially with this brush, which is kind of that plastic, um, not hairs, you know what I mean, like the things that comb through, comb, <laughs> plastic comb. It doesn't brush through the fibres enough. I don't like fibre mascaras in general because I find instead of them sitting like this on a lash, they kind of go like everywhere. And you can kind of get this really horrible, it looks like a lash and at the end it looks like a lash is going off that way. Especially if you want to do your bottom lashes and top lashes, you almost have to comb it through after. But then defeating the purpose of fibres building up product on your lashes. Really don't like fibre mascaras, I really don't like that mascara either. Last on my list today anyway, is the Glossier Sky Wash Eyeshadows. Here's the deal, I want to talk about this colour in particular. It's kind of like a light wash of colour, um, like a stain, a tint, and I think that's Glossier's whole brand, it's a tint of colour. I've done a whole video on their brand, you can go and have a look, I do a whole face, and I use these, spoiler alert, it doesn't go very well. But a green colour like this, I'm trying to think of a skin tone, okay, deeper skin tones would look incredible, but let's say my skin tone or very fair skin tones or even four or five shades darker than me there is no reason for a green wash of color if you're gonna go green go in and go green green and here's here's why i think this right it's because green is such a strange undertone i have a definite amount of green to my skin um as an undertone and it's not really a shade that you accentuate in skin green like oh i want to bring out my green so to have a green wash of color on the lid i just think is so unnecessary <laughs> however they do do really nice colors like this kind of terracotta kind of tone um, and they do blues and they do like nicer kind of washes of color Nobody needs a wash of green, a tint of green. I think it's just such just a ooh, an awful, awful colour. And in terms of building it up, you can't really build it up very well without it going crumbly and looking like really, really dry on the lid. So those were a few products that were a complete waste of money and a complete waste of time. Um, <laughs> is there anything there that you guys completely disagree with me? I would love, love, love to see your comments below. Um, or are there any products that you guys have tried that you really, really don't like recently? Or products that you maybe you think I would love instead of these products I've just showed you. Do let me know in the comments below. Consider subscribing if you liked this video and give this video a huge thumbs up. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you very soon. Bye.